So why do I say that this is a tricky problem? Because Singaporeans are typically very kiasu. They would say that, hey, I already paid for the maid already, what? Cannot be asking the maid not to do anything, then ask my child to do something. Right? Waste of money leh. Then some more the maid may get lazy. Then the child will ask, got maid why I do? Very complicated, right? Hello Channel Need viewers, welcome to another episode on Channel Need. I am TS, your psychologist, and today we're going to talk about resilience. Parents nowadays understand that resilience is very important and they would like their child or children to develop and master resilience. In times of crisis like the COVID-19 period, resilience is also an important trait in adults. If you want your child to be a resilient adult, you must start training and grooming him to be a resilient child. However, training your child to be resilient is not a straightforward task. It's not as simple as follow steps A, B, C, D, and then you will get a resilient child. Resilience is a composite function that depends on a lot of different factors. One of the factors is parenting style. Another factor is the temperament of your child. So it is possible that a parent can be very negligent, yet the child can learn to be very resilient. You can be a very loving parent, but yet your child may turn out to be not resilient. So in this episode, we're going to talk about three factors that do not favor your child becoming resilient. In psychology, we call this the risk factors. So as a parent, if you watch this video and you find that the three risk factors that I'm talking about apply to you, then you should try to eliminate the effects of these factors as much as possible. Just so that we are on the same page, resilience refers to the quality of a person to be able to bounce back on adversity. That means to say they will never give up, they keep moving and doing until they succeed. So a person who is not resilient will be one who gives up easily or worse still, doesn't even want to try. Parents and educators today find that their children or children and students in general are not exactly that resilient. This is a general trend and compared to children in the 1980s and 1990s, this is definitely true. So it's not parents fault, it's just that the society has progressed in such a way that resilience is not exactly encouraged. So we come to risk factor number one. Affluence. So parents of today are getting more affluent. They have higher income and now both parents are working. In the past, it used to be only one person who is the sole breadwinner of the family. Almost always the father, right? Salaries are also lower and families may be bigger. So what this means is that when children want something, they have to wait. Resilience is very highly related to the ability to delay gratification. So I remember as a child, I really want to buy some cassettes of my favorite singers. I would have to save up for them. Nowadays, because families have become more affluent, they can afford things for the children much faster and more easily. So the waiting time of children getting what they want is significantly reduced. On top of that, nowadays parents do not know how to handle children. So the moment the child just throws a tantrum, it's like mm, the parents just agrees. So this definitely does not encourage resilience. So the point to note here is that due to affluence, families have generally become more well-to-do. So they are quicker to give their children what they need. Children do not know the value of waiting. Some children may even feel entitled. And because children do not even try themselves, they just ask and they get what they want, they do not have much opportunities to exercise or learn resilience. So another societal factor, which is also a risk factor, that does not promote resilience is the advancement of digital devices. So children nowadays have iPads, tablets, smartphones, and they play a lot of games on these devices. So how does that affect the mastery of resilience? So this problem is twofold. First of all, 
children do not get to physically interact with people. So in the past, we get to quarrel, fight with our own friends and from there, we learn how to apologize, how to make up. Children nowadays, because of the advancement of games in the digital world, do not have as many opportunities to interact with children and interact with other people. Hence, a reduced opportunity to exercise resilience. And also, number two, all of these games do not have a real consequence in the real world. So you just lose a game or you just win a game and you feel good about it and that's it. Unlike in the real world, when you have a fight, you know that you are losing your friendship or you have lost an eraser. So in the real world, social interactions lead to observable, real, direct consequences. Real social interactions promote resilience because it's only in the real world where children get to encounter real failures and they learn what they can do about it. Now, factor number three is a tricky one. <laughs> a wrong sequence, but never mind. So, factor number three is the rise of domestic helpers. So, in the 1980s and 1990s, domestic helpers are still not very common, but it is very common now in Singapore today at least. Because now, both the daddy and the mummy are likely to be working. For many families with domestic helpers, the child no longer needs to run any household chores. So even getting a glass of water, they can just ask their auntie to help them. Of course, this again means reduced opportunity to have self-mastery of anything. Also, the child might get to feel entitled. And as I have mentioned, entitled children do not learn resilience because they are used to getting what they want and when they want it. In fact, there are a lot of entitled students when they grow up. They believe that just because my daddy and mummy has paid for the education, I deserve whatever I want. I can say whatever I want. So why do I say that this is a tricky problem? Because Singaporeans are typically very kiasu. They would say that, hey, I already paid for the maid already what? Cannot be asking the maid not to do anything, then ask my child to do something. Right? Waste of money leh. Then some more the maid may get lazy. Then the child will ask, got maid why I do? Very complicated, right? But I've seen a lot of families, they have successfully made their child do certain chores that does not require the domestic helper to help. Like getting himself or herself a glass of water. So in one of our future episodes, we're going to continue talking about how to build resilience in children. We hope you enjoyed this episode. This is just a precursor. So if you want to get more of our videos, do consider subscribing if you have not subscribed. Because if you do not subscribe, YouTube will no longer recommend our videos to you and you will miss out. <laughs> like big deal like that, right? Yeah. Mm. Anyway, we also produce videos on psychological principles and personality, so do check out on that. So as a parent, it'd be very useful for you to know your child's personality and we'll teach you how to deduce your child's personality as you go on. So I hope you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you again in our next episode. Goodbye!